the piano. I love to hear some funny play. I bought a piano, grand piano. It simply carries me away. I know my way to tickle a style. I'm obsessed, enamoured irresistibly drawn to the feel, sound, shape, even to the smell of the piano. I must have frittered years of my life at the keyboard and don't suppose that in all that time I've given anyone except myself the slightest pleasure by it. That's why I'm now off in search of other compulsive, lifelong piano junkies like me. Good, I make cock-ups like that is because I started learning the piano relatively late. I mean, most concert pianists, I think, start when they're four or something like that. And I started when I was 11 and I played the violin and it took me a, a short while to realise that the piano was what I really wanted to be playing. And my parents weren't at all musical. My, all my family are writers. My father was a writer, my grandfather was a writer, and they all loathed music. And in fact, when I practiced as a boy, I remember my father used to come in waving his fist at me saying, shut up that awful modern rubbish when I was playing some delicate piece of Schumann or something. I make my living writing books and I'm supposed to work hard at it, but find the presence of my piano in the next door room far too alluring. I just can't wait to get back to the ivories. I really don't understand how my children expect to have the bacon on the table. It doesn't take long to discover that the whole world is crawling with piano files like me. We flitter about just beneath the surface. All you have to do is scratch. I found one this morning near Gatwick. She's an airline pilot who, between flights, practices Rachmaninoff at airport lounges and hotel foyers. Carol Gould has been pining after one specific piano all her life. Love erupted at 14 when she was first allowed to practice on it at a hall in Glasgow. Truly, madly, deeply, she dreamt of owning it some day and made a scale model incorporating all of its most delightful features right down to its unique Steinway serial number. I thought I'd never see it again. So you rang up Steinway and said, where's 4614? 461,000. Yes. And they um, said, oh, sorry to hear well, <laughs> something, your beloved. Oh, I know. And they said? Yeah. Well, they said, you won't believe this, that very piano you're talking about that came from the Queen's Hall, it's here, it's in our showroom, and it's for sale. But how much did you, were they yes. trying to get for it? Well, it was over £50,000. Crikey. Yes, so I thought, yikes. And so but I, did you have the money, or did you borrow it, or um, what happened? I had a bit of it, and I had to borrow the rest, because we were actually saving up for a house. When you found the piano, when you went to Steinway's and mm -hmm. were reunited with this piano that you loved so much when you were 14 yes. years old, did you instantly recognise it when you sat down to play it? It's like a person. 20 years later, a person's probably changed and is different. The piano was, was slightly different as well. It was shiny and it had a different, sort of brighter sound. You are convinced it was the same piano? Yes. Oh, yes, <laughs> I looked in there and the number was there. Oh, a few. That's me reunited with it in Steinway Hall. Have you noticed that the precious instrument isn't in Carol's home? That's because it is too big to fit. She's blown all her savings on the Steinway, so there's no money left for a bigger house. For now, the piano resides at her sister's in Scotland, where Carol only gets to play on it once or twice a year. What's the long-term future of you and that piano ever being properly together? Um, well, the money saving has started again, obviously, right. so we're looking for just simply, uh, not necessarily a huge house, but just a house that can perhaps be adapted. So anyway, yeah. for the time being, you're, you're, you're left with this until you next yes. fly KLM up to, up to Glasgow. Glasgow. Yes. Hello. 
Carol wanted to be a professional concert pianist, but in the end decided that she couldn't stand the tension of performing in public. I sympathize with her entirely. I have never wished to play in public and will never do so unless bullied into it by television people. That doesn't stop me, however, from wanting to improve as a player. I'm riven with ambition. And, and playing the piano is basically all about ambition. And the odd thing about it, well, certainly from my point of view, because I don't, I don't, play, I don't play in front of people. I don't like playing in front of people at all. So the ambition isn't to show off and to please people. It's simply an ambition, a quiet ambition, against anyone else I've ever heard play a piece that I think I ought to be able to play myself. Hours and hours I spend practising new pieces. At the moment, my energies are devoted to learning a Chopin study that has been rearranged by a fiendish Lithuanian so that the whole thing has to be played at double speed using just the left hand alone. My plan is to perform it for the benefit of anyone who's still watching at the end of this programme. So the excuse here is I'm actually writing a book about a man whose arm fell off in the, in, the, in the war and he was a pianist. So now I'm pretending, but don't tell anyone else this, I'm pretending to, you know, be a really serious writer and get inside the mind of the man who did this. In fact, it's a lot of cock and bull. I'm just, I'm just feeding my addiction to play the piano rather than get on with my work. The contortionist who made this left-hand arrangement was called Leopold Godofsky. The music is beautiful, but I think he did it just to see if it could be done. Basically, I've so far learnt the first three bars, which I think I can play quite well, and the rest is, the rest is a total mess, but you can see how the first three bars go. Actually, that's the first one bar. I don't really dare go beyond that. But he's doing it. It should take me around a month to learn this piece, by which time I would expect to play it reasonably well. The thought of performing it in front of an audience, though, turns my innards to gel. It's going to be a challenge, because it's going to go on for three pages, ripple, ripple, squiggle, trying to play the tune and not only the accompaniment, you might have noticed in Chopin, quite simple, in Godofsky, he's already doubled the speed of it. So he's made the accompaniment more difficult and taken away a hand to do it. So. That'll keep me occupied when I'm meant to be writing my book. So bad luck, publishers, you're not getting anything. <laughs> and I'm having fun here. I think that's how it's going to be.